what if AI can help me into editing the video? What if AI can directly help me into writing the code? What if AI can just uh, see me and uh, tell me what I'm doing and help me to do something or learn something new? Everything is possible, but I'm not talking about the OpenAI or ChatGPT. I'm talking about the Google Gemini Flash 2.0 Multimodal Live API. This is the real thing. This is the future of how the AI should interact with the real time, with your communication, with your computer, mobile and everywhere. And this is great, so great that you can use it on your own system by using the API Google provide. Everything is so great that you will be amazed to see what I have done in this video. I have asked Google Gemini to help me on the writing Python code. I asked Google to help me to edit the video and I was playing some game with the Gemini and it was really fun. So everything in this video stay tuned till the end so that you will see the fun step i did with the camera that's great and before moving forward you just need to hit subscribe button because that is what makes you amazing because you help me to get the motivation to create new videos and with your help i can get so great videos for you also don't forget to hit like button and follow me on other platforms and now it's time to get Started. Google AI Studio was already there, but right now it's really magical. How? With the release of Gemini 2.0 Multimodal Live API, you can now have a real time conversation with this Gemini 2.0 AI model. And this is not just the normal conversation, you can also have the screen sharing option and the video calling option. I'm going to show you everything in this video. So let's get started by first going to the aistudio.google.com and you need to go on the stream real time. This is very important and you land on this one. And then on the right side, you can just select the Gemini 2.0 flash model. Uh, make sure you are on the audio conversation so that the Gemini will also respond in audio. And then you can pick any voice you want. So just perk is okay. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to share my screen. If I click here, share my screen, click on the entire screen and now see the magic. What you see on this, uh, on my screen, Google, I see a screen recording of the okay, Google AI that's great. Studio that's great. So which model I'm using? Can you tell me now? I can see you are using the Gemini 2, zero flash X model. Okay, that's great. And what do you see on my browser tabs? I see a Google AI Studio page with several browser tabs at the top. What's, the, the, ne middle, what's the next tab after the Google stream real time? The next tab is titled Real Time iGoogle. Okay. And the next after that? The tab after Real Time AI Google is titled Runway ML. Wow, that's great. Okay. So, can you help me to fix some code or maybe just help me to write the code? I can help with that. What kind of code do you want to write or fix? Okay, so can you see uh, I have this Python file. What's the name of this file? Yes, I see that you have a Python file open. The name of the file is app.py. Okay, so can you help me to write, uh, or write a simple program in Python, which I can write in few lines, but it could be fun to write. And you can choose like whatever uh, uh, program I should write. Okay, I can help with that. How about a program that prints hello world to the console? That's it's a classic. Too, that's first... too easy. So make it little complex. Okay, let's try something a bit more complex then. How about a program that calculates the factorial of a given number? That seems like a good one. How do I start? Okay, you can start by defining a function called factorial that takes an integer as an argument. So should I write like factorial like this? 
Yes, that is the right name for the function. Okay. You should start your function. Now you should write back quote def factorial and on back quote. Okay, here, is it like good? No, no. you need to add the keyword def before factorial when defining a function. So it should look like back quote. Is this right to create a function? Based on the code I see, you need to add parentheses after the function name and before the colon. After okay. adding those, so, it will be... So is it like this? Am I doing right? Yes, you are on the right track. Now okay. you need to add but, a colon. Uh, see, see, uh, Google, uh, I don't think this is going to work. I ask you just to help me to write step by step every word or letter or anything. Uh, what if you can just write the... Uh, full code in your conversation and then I can copy and paste. Okay, okay. I can certainly do that. Here is the complete code for a factorial function in Python. Back quote, back quote, back quote, Python, def factorial, n. If n equals equals zero, okay, wait, wait, return wait. one. You should not just uh, do the conversation. Uh, so at this point, uh, Google was uh, like literally saying, the code which obviously is not correct for us and just getting help to write the entire code is obviously not good so what i'm going to do i'm going to switch back to text and then i'm going to start the screen sharing and at this point what i'm going to do is i'm going to ask google to just hey create a factorial function in python and just give me so that i can copy it and paste it Okay, that's good. So I can just copy this and uh, paste it here. Oops. And paste it here. So that's good, but next I want to make this code running. So I'm going to ask Google like how to run the code. Hey Google, how I can run this code and uh, just can you give me the code example to run this function maybe? Okay, so see this is there. I just go and copy and again paste it and then finally I'll ask Google how I can run. So hey Google, uh, can you see my screen? This code is there, but uh, how I run this code? So see, this says like uh, you can use the app.py. Obviously this is really, really nice and I can do this. I get this factorial of five is 120 but what if i can just stop this and then convert this to audio and then once again start the chat i need to clear the conversation uh, screen sharing once again and then i'll ask google hey google uh, can you tell me how i can run this python code sure i can help with that to run the Python code, you first need to save the file with a backquote py backquote extension. Then you can open a terminal or command prompt, navigate to the directory where the file was saved. I don't saved, know how to run on the terminal. Uh, is there any button I can press simply? Okay, there is no specific button to run the code directly. You can open a terminal and navigate to the directory where you saved hey, the file. So see. At this point, Google is confused because there is a button on the right top which can simply run this file and uh, you can see this is there. But Google was unable, unable to uh, see that uh, button. So what if I tell Google, hey Google, can you see this button? This button is uh, to run the Python code. Have you not seen this? Sure, I see the play button at the top right corner of the application you are using. So why that is you are not uh, saying me so why you are not telling me before? I apologize, I didn't realize you were looking for a button on the screen. I thought you were only looking for instructions on how to use the terminal. No, I said like, I don't want to use the terminal. Anyways, that's great, thank you. You're welcome, I'm glad I could help. Is there anything else I can do for you? Okay, let's see how it can help me to fix or maybe edit a video. So I'm going to once again share my screen, go to the entire screen, share it, and now I am on uh, editor. So hey Google, which editor this is, do you know? 
The screen shows a video editor. The specific editor being used appears to be ScreenFlow. Can you help me to uh, edit this video? I just don't want to have this black section on this. This is a screen. I want this screen to be full screen. How do I do that? You want to edit the video to remove the black bars. You also want the screen to be full screen. You could try cropping the video to... Okay, to make the video full screen without the black bars, you should zoom in on the screen recording timeline track until the black bars are no longer visible. How do I zoom it? In the video, it appears that the user has already selected the screen recording in the timeline, and it is currently outlined in yellow. To zoom, there should be an option in the video editor that allows you to adjust the zoom, which is usually found in the video editing controls on the right-hand side of the screen. You can adjust it to be full screen. Can you help me with what I should do? Yes, I can help. In the video editor, look for the transform, scale, or zoom options on the right side of the screen. It looks How like you've you already selected the screen recording, How so now I you should that? adjust one of How do I do that? In order to adjust the zoom, you'll need to select the screen recording on the timeline and then locate the scale or zoom settings in the inspector panel on the right side of the screen. From there, you should be able to drag okay. the slider or Can you help me now, what I can do right now? Certainly, you should see the scale option in the inspector panel on the right side. Click on the value and drag it to the right to increase how much, the scale. How much I make it, how much percentage I make the scale so that this black will go up? You will want to scale it up to at least 110 to 120%. Give but me that might exact, vary. Calculate, calculate the space here and how much I need to uh, maximize it or scale it. Give me the precise percentage. Based on what I'm seeing, to get rid of the black bars around the screen recording, you will need to scale the video to 125%. This should fill the screen perfectly, but you may need to make some slight adjustments. Okay, that's great. That's really nice. But I still see some margin on the black. Can you just again uh, help me to give me a precise number to remove all these black from the left and right? Okay, to completely remove the black margins you are seeing on the left and right, you will need to set the scale to 128%. Wow, that's so amazing. You saw that this was so great that it helped me to exactly, precisely give the number so that I can get rid of that uh, border. And that was so helpful that I always try to make like what it should be 120, 128, then maximizing and then minimizing. All sorts of things are not good in general purpose, but with this help, I can do that. So you saw that this uh, Google Gemini is really crazy. And the best part is you can use an API for this uh, Google Gemini 2.0 multimodal so that you can create something on your own. This is kind of a computer use of Cloud and Tropic, but in a better way, in real time. So this is, this is really great. We can have the conversation, we can have the screen sharing. But at last, just for the fun, I'm going to share the camera and see what the Google will see. Okay, so let's share the camera. Hey Google, what do you see? Okay, I, see I see a person, person sitting, sitting in a chair. chair. They, they are, are wearing, wearing a denim, denim jacket and glasses. Behind, behind them, there, there is a wall with a circular decoration. Okay, what that uh, decoration uh, color is? The decoration appears to be a shade of blue. Okay, and what's at the center? The center of the decoration looks like a lighter, possibly white, circle. Okay, great. So can you tell me how many fingers I have? I see that you are holding up one hand with five fingers extended. But I can see five fingers. No, it's incorrect. It's four finger and one thumb. You are right. There are four fingers and one thumb visible. Okay, but just remember this and now tell me how many fingers I have. Okay, I see you're now holding up both hands with five fingers extended on your left hand and one finger extended on your right hand, totaling six fingers visible. But remember I told you this is one thumb. 
and uh, so we should not count thumb as a finger now tell me how many fingers i have okay, okay if we are not, not counting the thumbs, thumbs as fingers, fingers then you have five, five fingers, fingers on one hand and one finger on the other for a total of six fingers visible again five fingers uh, one thumb okay so now tell me how many fingers i have now all right now, now that you're holding, holding up both hands and we're not counting the thumbs as fingers there are 10 fingers visible so if you're not not counting thumb as a finger then it should be eight fingers right if we're not counting thumbs as fingers then you're correct there would be eight fingers so why you were saying uh, 10 fingers uh, previously that's right i said 10 fingers when you had both hands up before because at that time i did no, I'm, I'm not, not mad. mad. I'm an AI, AI and don't, don't experience emotions like that. that. It's just <laughs> that I follow your instructions and have been counting fingers based See, on what we agreed how on. how amazing it was and it's just a fun to have things like this, but it could be really useful in the coming future. And I just showed you a very nice little demo of how useful it could be in writing code while editing something. It's really, really mind blowing and real personal assistant for you. So if you like this kind of videos, just help me to grow on this channel so that I can come up with really great and amazing videos for you. And for that, you just need to hit the subscribe button because that's what I want. And for that, you need to share this video to others so that people will know that amazing video comes on the Bitfumes YouTube channel and they should also subscribe. Don't forget to like this video and uh, that's what makes you amazing person because you help me to grow. You help me to get encouragement to create these kind of videos. See you in the next video. Till then, goodbye.